Uh, welcome to Introduction to Crowds. Uh, my name is Luke Padarakia, Senior Product Specialist or Production Specialist. Um, and yeah. Um, who is this class for? This class is for uh, people who are um, uh, new to crowds and looking to uh, get into it. Um, the one of the things that uh, I should mention is it's uh, an introductory class, but it's also uh, going to be comprehensive. Um, so there's there's going to be a lot of material uh, covered in the class. Um, so it's going to be more than just uh, here's an introduction, here's how to make a crowd sim and go. Um, the idea is that I'm going to, to try and discuss um, all of the relevant features um, or the ones that are most uh, immediately relevant um, to get you uh, what you need and uh, get you kind of started and up and running and uh, allow you to have control um, of your simulation. Um, and then from that base of knowledge, you'll be able to um, uh, explore, expand, um, and uh, uh, um, increase your knowledge um, on your own. Um, one of the things I should mention about this course is that it's going to cover um, everything on the simulation side, uh, but not on the rendering side. Um, so that is, uh, you know, will be left um, for uh, another time or another section. Um, but uh, this is all about, you know, bringing um, stuff into Houdini, uh, simulating, and then making adjustments uh, after your simulation. That's kind of the scope uh, in terms of what we're covering. So uh, some broad outlines of what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, the first section is just going to be resources. This is going to be places you can look for information as well as places you should be looking for information um, in order to keep up to date. Uh, the, that's going to be fairly brief. Section number two is uh, in-place animation. Uh, this is kind of like the simplest uh, type of crowd information. Uh, crowd simulation. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this um, because it's uh, uh, it's kind of simple and primitive um, way of doing crowd sims. I'm going to be spending my most of the time on the next section, which is uh, locomotion, which is a different way of doing crowd sims. Um, locomotion is a more advanced way of doing crowd sims. It allows for things like terrain adaptation and foot locking. Um, and uh, is, uh, uh, in general, um, a kind of preferable way of working. Um, and in that section, I will include it in that section, I'm going to be talking about IO in terms of uh, writing things out to uh, bringing things in, in and writing them out from uh, USD and FBX, uh, with particular emphasis on bringing stuff in. Um, and uh, different ways to do that uh, so that uh, you have a little bit of um, um, information on however your pipeline is being used and whatever your studio happens to use. Uh, hopefully you'll have the information you need to kind of accommodate that. Um, section four is going to be a uh, um, review of uh, triggers. Um, so uh, triggers are what triggers behavior from one state to another. Um, there's quite a bit of that, uh, so we'll be going into that too. Um, section five is, I've titled this pre and post simulation adjustment. And you can see in brackets there, I have art direction. Um, <clears throat> this is ways of, uh, once you've set up CrowdSim and know the kind of mechanics of setting up CrowdSim, uh, talking about ways to kind of get control of it and address art direction. Um, this, some of the subjects I'm going to be talking about here cover it at two different stages. Um, one is before the sim or during the sim while it's being run, some things you can do there. And then the other thing will be uh, post sim. So after you've simulated a sim, um, what are some of the things you can do there to kind of uh, address uh, art direction? 
The last section is going to be section six, which is um, reviewing some features that are new in uh, Houdini 18 um, so that you have access to it and uh, you can know how they work. Um, specifically, uh, uh, blend shapes and how they work in Houdini 18 and um, uh, procedural transitions and how they work. Um, procedural transitions are different from just regular transitions in the transition graph, um, which I will be handling mostly in section three, but procedural transitions are new as of 18, and uh, we'll be discussing those in uh, uh, section six. Um, some information in terms of, you know, expectations, uh, in terms of what you should know for doing this course. Um, you uh, should be familiar with the Houdini interface and comfortable working with it. Um, for once we get to the section on uh, triggers, um, particularly the latter part of that, uh, you're going to have to have some knowledge of VEX um, and pre, the pre and post simulation section and um, uh, section six. You'll also uh, need to have some understanding of VEX. Um, so uh, make sure that uh, you kind of have, you've kicked the tires on that a little bit and at least understand some of the basics. All right, um, welcome back. Uh, the first thing we're gonna discuss here is uh, resources. Uh, this is just where to get some uh, help and uh, things you can look at uh, to help you on your journey of learning crowds. Um, the most obvious one is going to Side Effects' website. Um, under the section at the top called Learn, there's a subsection called Tutorials, and there's uh, a whole bunch of tutorials here. Um, some of these have been created uh, by side effects, and some of them uh, have been created by third parties. So um, you can uh, take a look at this and kind of use this as a resource. Um, there's uh, some that are paid and some that are free, so uh, feel free to have a look and um, uh, see what appeals to you. Um, of these tutorials, one of the uh, things that I, I do recommend you take a look at and um, uh, review if you can get a chance are um, the master classes on crowds. Uh, at the moment, there are two of them, uh, one from uh, Houdini uh, 15, the release, and another release of Houdini 15.5. Uh, um, these are you know, we're in 18 right now, so these guys are a little bit older, but um, there's still, I recommend that you take a look at them. Um, these were basically written uh, or created by the, uh, the developer at SideFX in charge of uh, setting up crowds. So the information is kind of straight from the horse's mouth. Um, some of this stuff's old and, um, you know, we have newer, different ways of doing it. Um, and uh, I'll be... Go, going over uh, the, the newer or appropriate methods um, uh, in this course, but uh, just as a nice um, resource to kind of complete your knowledge, um, looking at these is a good idea. Um, I should also mention that uh, going forward um, in the future, you want to uh, check out when there's a new release, you want to check out and see if there are any master classes uh, surrounding um, the new release and the, the features of that new release. Um, one of the ways, uh, just so you know, one of the ways that Houdini's uh, master classes tend to work is they assume that you've watched um, all the previous master classes in order. Um, so, say, you know, uh, a master class ends up getting released for Houdini 19, it'll have assumed that you've are familiar with the information in these two master classes. So uh, good to have um, kind of just under your belt and have seen. Um, as I mentioned, it's a little bit older. So, you know, the way I'd recommend watching it is, you know, as you're doing your work or whatever, have it on a separate monitor and playing in the background. And, you know, you can just look at it periodically. Um, you don't, doesn't necessarily require all of your attention for the entire uh, run of the video, but uh, I do feel it's worth pointing out. 
The other thing that's kind of uh, very important to uh, check out and be on top of is if you go to um, our website under support, there's a section called documentation. Uh, you can click on that and then within the front page of the documentation, there's a, a link to what's new in the latest release of uh, Houdini. Um, it's important that uh, you go to this uh, as, and check this out, particularly as new releases of Houdini come out, um, because you'll want to become familiar with uh, the latest way of doing things uh, and the new way of doing things. And this is kind of how you do that. Um, you'll notice in the what's new section, they'll have uh, you know, what's new for Houdini 18, what's new for 17.5, and what's new for um, 17. So that, you know, you can look at the previous releases as well and kind of get familiar with not just uh, what's new in the current release, but also what's new in, in the past couple of releases. And, um, you know, hopefully when we, um, you know, come out with the new release of Houdini, there'll be, uh, you know, the supporting help that you guys need and the tutorials and stuff like that. Uh, if you find that there's a, um, a feature that's listed in this kind of what's new section that isn't well documented or you can't find an example on or a tutorial on, um, email support and say, hey, you know, there's this feature that's listed in the what's new section you know, can you send me an example file that kind of illustrates how it worked? And uh, they should be able to provide you with something. So um, uh, that's it for uh, resources. Uh, I will uh, see you in the next video.